In the book of Ephesians that we have been looking at on Thursdays, we've seen where Paul is teaching us what it is to be the new people, the new men and women that God calls us to be, to be imitators of God and his righteousness and his love and his holiness, and to be people worthy of the calling to which we have been called, as he said earlier in the book that we have been saved by the grace of God and now we need to be living such a life that shows that we have indeed been saved and so he's talked about walking in love he's talked about godly marriages husbands and wives there in chapter 5 and then at the beginning of chapter 6 we saw where he talks about godly homes godly relationships in the homes godly children godly parents and now, picking up in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5, there's another area of our lives that Paul says we need to be walking worthy of the calling to which God has called us. And that is, for our purposes today, um, in the workplace. Whether we are a worker, a servant of some kind, or whether we are a boss or a master, the one in charge. Notice what he says here, beginning in chapter 6, verse 5, bond servants, he says, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart, as to Christ. So you could imagine in the position of a bond servant and sometimes even the temptation as workers and and especially when you know we may not like the job or the task at hand our heart's not always in it our mind isn't always in it maybe we can slack off or maybe we just don't feel like doing certain things and so it may be tempting to disobey our bosses our employers our master those in charge or to sort of not give a, a wholehearted effort but but paul says here to bond service listen be obedient to those who are your masters um which of course means don't be disobedient don't shirk your duties don't uh try to get out of or uh to pretend like you're doing it, but you're not really doing it. No, he says, be obedient to your masters, who are your masters in the flesh and this life. He says to be obedient with fear and trembling, with that respect of their position, of their authority. He says to do so in sincerity of heart. So not doing it in a way that, you know, half-hearted, don't really care, don't really want to, but notice the impact here that just as Paul had used with talking about marriage in chapter 5, about wives submitting to their husbands as to Christ, husbands loving their wives as Christ loved the church here, he says, we are to be obedient to our masters, serving with sincerity of heart as to Christ. Because he goes on to say in verse 6, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ. We are actually to be bond servants of Christ. That is what we have been called to, to serve God, to serve Christ. And he says we are doing the will of God in our jobs, in our tasks. We need to do it from the heart. He says we're not to, to serve with eye service. That is, you know, appearing to maybe be doing what we should be when we're not really doing you know when the boss is around when the boss is looking we we look like we're busy and we're working and then as soon as the boss isn't around we just kind of slack off and do whatever not with eye service as just pleasing men when they're looking but as bond servants of christ doing the will of god from the heart with good will doing service as to the lord and not to men Knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. Paul, in speaking to servants here, being in a position of servitude, and again, maybe not having that feeling of goodwill, that feeling of sincerity. But Paul says, no, we are, first and foremost, we are bond servants of Christ to do the will of God. And the will of God is that we have goodwill in our hearts, that we serve from our hearts, 
serving others, serving God, and serving one another. Knowing that, you know, whatever we receive from a master, from an employer, uh, that really the great greatest reward is what we receive from God, not the paycheck. Yes, of course, we, you know, we need to work to make a living and such. But really, Paul reminds us that there's more to this life than just the physical money and food and clothes that that it's about how we live, that we're really serving God, and to be serving God in our in our jobs, in our, our work. Goodwill, doing service as if we're serving the Lord, because we are. Knowing that whatever good we do, we'll receive the same from the Lord, no matter who we are, no matter what position we're in. We need to be seeking the reward that comes from God, above all. And then he gives a word to masters, though, too. That, you know, yes, sure, he says as workers, as servants, bond servants, employees, yeah, we've got to be obedient, respectful, we've got to be sincere, good workers. But that doesn't mean masters should just get to do whatever they want to their workers, to their servants. So he says, if you are in a position of master, do the same things to them. Goodwill, sincerity, cert you're serving the Lord. Do the same to them, giving up threatening. So no more threatening your servants and employees and, and really just being a bully and, and really oppressing them, not making it hard on them. Give up threatening, knowing that your own master also is in heaven. And there is no partiality with him. God's not going to say, oh, well, you're a boss, you're an employer, you're a master. Oh, okay, that's all right. You can do whatever you want. No, God holds all accountable, all of us accountable, whether we're in a position of authority, whether we're in a position of servitude. We are all going to answer to God. So servants need to serve in a way that is pleasing to God. Masters need to serve in a way that is pleasing to God. And so no matter who we are, if we are a Christian, if we are a follower of Christ, if we are a child of God, we are, we are put God first in all that we do, in our homes, in the workplace. We are to live for the calling with which God has called us. Life-changing, to be that new person, to put off the old man. To put off as servants, to put off maybe the half-hearted, slacking, disrespectful, disobedient attitudes in nature. Put off the old stuff and put on this new man who's going to have goodwill and sincerity and, and serving and being obedient and helpful and love. And as a master, put off the old man who is threatening and oppressing the servants and those under you. And instead, treat them with respect and love. Serve them and help them, knowing we're all going to answer to our God, our Master in heaven. And so as we maybe try to apply this to our own lives today, we need to think about in the workplace. How am I as a, a worker, as an employee, as a servant? How is my attitude? How is my heart? Am I serving with sincerity? Am I viewing the work that I do as if I'm serving God? And same as a master. Maybe if I'm in a position that I've got people under me, under my direction and instruction and authority, how am I treating them? Uh, am I being good, having goodwill and sincerity towards them as well? Not threatening, not oppressing um, but living in a way that is pleasing to God, acting and doing all things in a way that is pleasing to God. Let's all consider this, consider our lives, examine ourselves, and make sure that we are being the godly servants or masters that God wants us to be. God bless.